Hi guys, James here from the Mad Tin Hatter blog again. Just working my way through this uh, State of the Collection series of videos that I'm doing today. Um, what I normally try and do is every year I show off the progress I've made with my Flames of War 15mm World War II collection. Um, I've not done it since 2017. Um, so I thought I would just kind of show off. I'm fighting against fading light at the moment, but I'll, I'll kind of crack on and see what I can get done. So today I am showing off, well this video I am showing off my allied armour and some artillery options and my aircraft, a couple of typhoons there at the back. So on the table today I have two full squadrons of Shermans. Um, the squadron closest to us, this one here, is my kind of pride and joy. Um, I'm going to be doing some more work on shortly, uh, just to update and tidy up and kind of get things sorted with them. Um, they were the first unit that I did. They were collected and painted over a period of several years. So there's a bit of work to be done on them just to bring them all up to standard. You can see in here there's a couple of scratch built, well not scratch built, but converted M4 hybrids. Uh, number 79 there is one. The rest of them are either Fireflies, M4A4 Fireflies or M4 Shermans, resin and metal. Um, so that's my grandfather's regiment. Although I don't think he served in that squadron, I think. The information I've got is he was in the HQ squadron, but you never know if someone does plastics for playing M4 Shermans, I might one day add to this lot. With this squadron, I have some uh, Lazon Humber Armoured Cars. I've got a nice big um, Eel de Ward, I think it's called, uh, or Le Ward, uh, French, Frenchish name, American large recovery truck. Um, that's decaled up as being part of 33rd Armoured Brigade's Light Aid Detachment, which is who my grandfather's uh, regiment served with. I've also got the M3A1 Stuarts, which they had, um, some Crusader AAs and an armoured recovery vehicle, which I built myself, kind of converted from a plastic kit. Um, so that's those guys. The other Sherman squadron I have are these chaps here. Um, slightly differently out for these. These are Poles, um, A squadron of the 24th Polish Lancers, of the 1st Polish Armoured Division. Um, again, sticking to my Operation Totalized theme. So these guys were in action on the 8th of August 1944 for the first time um, alongside 33rd Armoured Brigade. Slightly different setup for these because the Poles had a bit of a manpower crisis, more of a manpower crisis than the British had. So whereas the Brits have four squadrons of four tanks and an HQ squadron. I need to add another tank to this HQ squadron, I think. This HQ troop, even. The Poles had uh, three full squadrons of four tanks and then their HQ troop... I keep saying squadrons when I mean troops. Their HQ troop actually had a Firefly in it as well. So I built that using the old PDF, um, the Polish Forces PDF that was about um, quite a while ago. Um, I went a little bit extra and did flags and stuff on them based on the early war Polish cavalry flags don't think that that's actually realistic but I thought it was quite a cool thing so rule of cool kind of won out to support these I've got a couple of uh, Polish 20mm Crusaders and some Polish M5 Stuarts uh, or these might actually be I had a bit of confusion over this, whether they're M5 or M5A1 or M3A3s. I think these are M3A3s, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, they're the correct Stuart for this Sherman formation. Because when I'm doing my historic stuff, I try and make sure I get the correct models. Um, I had actually painted these Stuarts up to be Canadians, um, and then realised that the Canadians actually had uh, the later version of the Stuart, and uh, just by luck, this unit had this version, which means they fitted. Oh, I'm talking absolute tosh. 
scratch everything I've just said. These stuarts are actually Canadian stuarts. As you can see, I've got Canadian markings on them. So I initially started trying to paint them for my poles and then realised, oh heck, wait a minute, the poles had the later stuarts. The Canadian 2nd Armoured Brigade had the earlier stuarts. So these um, are actually Canadians and they will be getting added to later when I eventually get round to painting the uh, Sherman 3s that I have for my 10th uh, Canadian Armoured Regiment, a Fort Gary Horse I think I'm going to do. So these are my first Canadians, first Canadian tanks, and I still need to paint the tanks for the poles. See, this is why it's important to lay things out so you don't get confused too much. Um, supporting the poles, we have some artillery. I've just dropped my cue card. Um, so these are from the Polish 1st Armoured Division's Motorised Artillery uh, Regiment. Um, and the OP tank, OP Sherman tank there. So these poles are all M4A4s. Um, most of them were actually those really, really bad plastic kits that came in the original open fire box. Um, I bought them second hand. They were put together pretty badly. Um, I actually sat with a scalpel and systematically took them apart, scraped off all the excess glue, kind of scraped off the excess plastic to get them to fit better and then used putty and things, put them back together. The ones with lots of uh, sandbags on the front are the ones where, unfortunately, there was damage to the hull through the previous person's um, modelling work, shall we say. So, covered that all up. Um, they've got their Crusaders, Stuart still to paint. Um, at the very back over here, I've got my little Oster OP aircraft. Um, I also have a little... Um, forward air observer in a Humber, uh, sorry, a Dingo, yeah, a Dingo. Um, probably not correct for Flames of War. We also play Battle Group and the scenario games we play, it doesn't really matter. I do have an M3 um, scout car to do with the proper air observer team in it as well, but, but the, the little Dingo will do as a stand-in. Um, a couple of Tiffies, three Typhoons, uh, I got the first one here, which is a plastic kit that I built and painted, um, like two ninety nine Revel snap together thing. Um, the other two are Battlefront resins, but they're resins from different periods, so they're actually slightly different size wise. All three of these models actually are slightly different size wise, but I don't think you can really tell too badly, so that's fine. Um, down at the front here, I've got more Canadians. M10s um, from the 56 anti-tank, no, 56 battery of the 6th Canadian anti-tank regiment. Um, they were ordered just before Operation Totalize to arm put armour on the roofs of their M10s, hence these ones are armoured. I do have four M10s to do for my poles, which will be 17 pounder armed ones. These ones have three inch guns. I'll also have um, 17 pounder armed M10s for my Canadian armour uh, division stuff as well. So a couple of units of those to do. Behind them we have some Crocs, six of them, from 141 Regiment Royal Armoured Corps. Um, they were technically part of 31 Armoured, uh, sorry, Tank Brigade, but I think they actually spent more time working the 79th Armoured Division until they eventually got transferred to them. At the back I've got some spares. Uh, when I built the poles I miscalculated how many Shermans I would need. Um, so some extras. A couple of M4A ones that I just painted because I had them. Again, don't really have a use for them currently, but what the hell. At the front I've got those uh, DD tanks that I talked about in an earlier video when I was talking about landing craft. These are DD Shermans for my Juno Beach landing game. Um, I've got another two of these to paint up uh, because two of the models in front of you were sticky when I got them. So I put an email to Battlefront just to say, look, 
got these in the January sale. They're really sticky. Um, I'm going to put some gloss on them and I'm sure they'll be fine. But just in case you get any other complaints. And Battlefront very kindly sent me two more. So I need to buy one more to give me another troop. And then another two to give me a full squadron of these. When I wasn't actually intending to buy a full squadron. But I'm most of the way there anyway. So such is the madness of my brain. Um, behind the DDs I've got some uh, dozers. These are actually Skytrex models. I uh, got two of them. We play massive scenario games. Engineering tanks are always in high demand. Um, a couple of AV, AVs RE or AVREs, depending on how you want to argue about the pronunciation. Um, and behind them, another couple. One with a Fascine and one with a SBG bridge um, on the big base there. Uh, they are both S and S models kits um, with Plastic Soldier Company uh, tanks. Um, I've got a whole load of blog posts about these because they took a little bit of work, as you can imagine, but I think they look pretty cool. They've been on the table a few times and it's always good to get them used. And then I didn't really want to include any work in progress tanks here, but these are for all intents and purposes finished. Um, I'm just having some issues with bases just now because I ordered the wrong magnets. Um, so I previously had... Um, these are Westminster Dragoons, I believe. 22nd Dragoons, even. Um, I had two of these painted along with the command vehicle. Um, historically, I think they came in trips of five with a command vehicle. So um, my good friend Dave Doherty actually very kindly uh, purchased another couple of DDs for me. Uh, oh, sorry, Sherman Crabs for me a while ago. They've been languishing in my uh, to-do pile. I decided to get them done um, they are, as you can see, effectively all painted. Um, I just need to get the basing sorted, uh, which should just happen in the next week. So I thought I would include them in the, the walkover, the walkthrough, because they will actually be done soon. So that's kind of it. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I've missed. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I've got a couple of bits and pieces to do. I'm going to build just a little light aid detachment for the scenario games that we do, based around this and maybe a couple of trucks and a jeep or something like that. Um, I have so many tanks to paint, it's not real. Um, as much as I've got all of this done, I've got the Cromwells assembled to do a Polish Cromwell uh, Armoured Reconnaissance Squadron. I've got M4 Shermans to do a Canadian Armoured, uh, first Canadian, sorry, 4th Armoured Division, Canadian regiment. Um, I can't remember which ones I had selected to do. They were the ones that got uh, lost and cut off and wiped out. Um, Worthington Force, I can't remember what the name of the regiment was uh, at this point in time. It'll come back to me when I stop filming, no doubt. I've got Canadian Shermans to do for the 2nd Armour Brigade, uh, 2nd Canadian Armour Brigade. Those will be Fort Gary Horse. Um and uh, those are Sherman 3s so in total um, once I eventually get things finished I'm going to have a squadron of Sherman 1s uh, two squadrons of Sherman 5s and a squadron of Sherman 3s a squadron of Cromwells I've also in the January sale that Battlefront had this year bought a whole load of Churchills, so I'm going to have a Churchill squadron. They didn't take part in Totalize, but really painting Churchills is a bit of a... They're ugly tanks, but they're really cool to paint. They look really smart around the table. Um, as a club, we've been talking about doing kind of Operation Epsom as a series of Link campaigns, so um, Churchills would be really good for that. Um, I've got more M10s to do, loads of Stuarts to do, uh, all sorts. So... Uh, I like my tanks. I like my Allied tanks. Um, they look really good on the table. The, the size of the tables we play, the, the dispersion of the armour and stuff. Um, give you some really interesting games, I think. Um, but yeah. So, armour-wise then, that is the current state of the collection. Uh, and that's me for today. Catch you later.